In the last session, we set up our counters to increase the value and also to add to our total basket price. What we're going to do in this session is actually set up our collision for the removal and also eventually turn our basket to cancel our order into a button to reset the program. So let's get underway. Well, we know from previously we need to work with our collision test. So in this case here, when we check our position, we're actually checking to see if we need to add. So now what we want to actually do is check also if we need to remove. from the basket. So, and we're going to do the exact opposite to what we did before with our collision. But first of all, rather than going MC Shopping Add, we need to name our new item as MC Shopping Remove. So the first thing we need to do is go back to our GUI interface, convert our object into a movie clip, so we can associate some code with that. So convert to symbol, so this is going to be rather than add, um, remove and it will have an MC on the end so we need to remove the MC off the start it's going to be movie clip, ok its instance name is going to be M MC shopping remove ok, so let's go back to our code now the good thing if we actually write code correctly we can recycle the code so I can take this whole block of code which is the add and put it underneath the remove and just go through and change some things so this is going to be remove so now we've got remove we know that okay got socks um, we want to now take socks this will help us with our, our debugging. Eventually we can run these out. Now rather than adding to our score, we actually want to remove. So we can change that to a minus. And to a minus. And to a minus. And because they always start with a zero, we can actually then um, de-increment those. And our output's still going to be the same. And we still need to show the total and we still need to remove it. So let's run this program and see how we go. Let's add a sock. One. Now let's take one. Now it said take sock, but it hasn't actually decremented our score. So we need to sort of go back and sort of correct this at the moment. So let's fix our GUI by sending this to the back. Modify. Arrange. Send back. Run this once more. Let's add a sock. So it's got sock. Let's take one. Take sock. Okay, so that's zero, but it's still adding to our score there, so we need to go back into our code and have a look at that. So underneath our take section, we minus one from that, but we still add to our total. So we need to actually remove that from our total with a minus. So once again, we go through and do that to all three. Notice fixing one, you might as well fix all three at the same time. So now we should be able to add a sock one five dollars now remove a sock zero add a jumper remove a jumper add a shirt remove a shirt now you're also going to be aware of the object size you notice when this goes in here it actually starts colliding with the object above so you may have to reshape the sizes to make sure they fit appropriately on stage okay that's working really well but we've got one little problem at the moment if that goes in there, we can go to minus 1 and we have uh, minus 5. So we need to put an error trap in for this. To do this, we need to have a look at our if statement. So with um, take stop. So in this case here, if we've got a hit test, we can then put an if statement inside here and say, well, if bracket n sock if and sock is not greater than or equal to if n socks is greater than or equal to one, then we increment or we de increment it. So therefore, if it is not greater than or equal to one, 
it won't do this. So it needs to be at least one. So therefore, if I go down here and let it go now, nothing happens. If I add one, I can then subtract one, but I can't subtract two. So if I add two, I can then remove one. So we just put an error trap in, but we need to do that for all objects at the moment because we can still take the other ones out. So let's head back into our code and quickly put the other objects in. So once again, so what we've got is an if and an if inside that if. So we'll use the same sort of command and paste this here. And this one is for shirt, so n shirt and put an extra brace on the end and we'll paste another one in here and this will be in rugby and put an extra brace down here we'll line our code up a little bit neater there we go and we'll run this now no errors can't go to zero can't go to zero can't go to zero Okay, now the last thing we need to do for our project is actually get this button to work here. So what we want to do is we're going to head back to our GUI. I'm going to click on this object here. And we're going to modify, and we know that we can convert to symbol, but rather than having a movie clip, I'm going to turn it into a button. And it's going to be called Cancel BTN, and its instance name is going to be BTN Cancel. And what I want to do is I want to change the aspect of this. I'm going to double click this and head into the timeline. So I'm going to go to my timeline and I'm going to go F6 and F6. When I'm on the overstate, I want to increase it. So I'm just going to go Command T and increase that, lock them together so they're together and increase that to 110. So it grows. When I click down, once again, I want to change it so it gets smaller. I'm going to take it back to about 90. So it gets smaller. And the hit test will be the hit test. So let's have a look at this button. Okay, we can see it works. Now we need to set up an event listener for this. So once again, we'll go back to our timeline, move back to the upper scene. And we can go to our action script panel. And in here, we need to set up an event listener. So BTN cancel dot add event listener we want to add a mouse event dot click now we need to work out what we want to run when that works now I could write a whole reset function but we've already sort of written one when we initialize our program we actually set all our counters to zero we actually output all the, the zeros back to the screen and then we check the position and make sure everything's in the right place. Now, end total cart is set to zero here as well, so that will set it to zero. Socks, rugby, and shirt were set to zero and output it to the screen. So by running initialize again, we can actually blank the whole program. But this will open up a new set of um, questions for us because we need to actually pass information to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a function reset and that will create our reset function. So it's going to be my last function. So function reset bracket pass an event to this. It's going to be a mouse event and we're going to call that function initialize. So when I click this button, it should call this function. This function actually calls a new function without a handler, which then will reset everything and get our GUI back to zero. So let's have a look. Let's buy something and let's reset. There we go. Let's buy something expensive. Click reset, a total goes back to zero. Even when we buy a sock then, the count is correct. So there we go, we have a full automated shopping cart with adding, subtracting, with some error trapping, a reset, and you can use these skills to create lots of different programs.